Welcome to TalkAboutTopeka.com. I'm Chris Schultz. On this episode, we're going to talk to one of the coolest guys in downtown Topeka. No, I'm not talking about myself, of course. I'm talking about Mr. Jeff Carson from Gizmo Pictures. We're going to be talking about downtown. We're going to be talking about the Jayhawk Theater. It's all coming up on this segment, which is brought to you by the WIBW channels and the Break Room's brand new lunch experience. Check out the new menu at breakroomdowntown.com. It all starts right now. <laughs> Joining us today is Jeff Carson. He's one of the owners of Gizmo Pictures. Uh, I've got a whole list of things for you. You've, you're with Jayhawk Tower. You've uh, you've got a beautiful building in downtown Topeka. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks yeah, for coming. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, we we know you first and foremost for Gizmo Pictures. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about uh, Gizmo. Uh, yeah, Greg, Reddy, and I uh, were working at Fry Allen uh, Incorporated, and uh, we formed our sister companies there, bought them out, though, in uh, 2004, and formed Gizmo Pictures, and, you know, we kind of came up with the name after, you know, kind of deciding we weren't going to be Capital City Video Production Company or something right. like that, and, you know, Gizmo reflects kind of the fun nature that we both uh, enjoy, and... Uh, it also kind of, you know, reflects the fact that there's a lot of gadgets and gizmos and stuff that go into the video production business. So it, the name stuck and it works pretty well for us. We were over uh, on a Huntoon by Porterfields for four or five very short years and suddenly Amazing found ourselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we found ourselves needing uh, a new home. Uh, my wife, Linda, was looking for a place for the Blue Planet Cafe. It all kind of gelled together. We found this building and we fell in love with it. And uh, it's what started. happens when you get Gizmo wet after midnight. They turn into yeah, like yeah, that's, yeah, right. downtown. See, and if, in fact, uh, I didn't even. I never saw Gremlins. Oh, that was the one. So I had no idea who uh, you know Gizmo really was. And, oh, uh, he's the cute. He's the cute, adorable gremlin. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, and when we're wet after midnight, look out. Yeah, it's trouble. <laughs> I know a few yeah. other people that are yeah. that way, but uh, no, you're also on the board of the uh, the Jayhawk Theater, yes. right? So uh, tell me a little bit about what's happening there. We're seeing a lot of things happening. Yeah, well, the Jayhawk is uh, a project that's it's not much different than buying this old building uh, in a lot of ways. There's a lot of uh, history in our building. You know, our building's a year older than the Eiffel Tower. I mean, that's you know, wow. pretty amazing. And uh, the Jayhawk Theater opened in 1926, and it closed in 76, and uh, we like to refer to it as sort of an extended, uh, you know, intermission. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the popcorn uh, needs to start getting popping again. And we've got uh, a lot of really dedicated people on the board. Um, we're um, trying to develop friendships in the community that uh, believe in us and believe in the fact that if you take, you know, the Jayhawk Theater and develop it into a real viable entertainment venue mm -hmm. that um, the rest of downtown is going to end up benefiting from that. Uh, and we think it's just a whole lot of dominoes will start to fall. Well, and you, and you look at, at downtown and you look at in terms of private investment, and they, they talk a lot about all the private investments that's been going in. But uh, when you think of specific examples, I mean, you can name the, the Capitol Federal Building. Mm -hmm. You can name all of the work that you guys put in. I mean, talk about the, the, an amazing transformation that you guys did with your building uh, personally. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and there's just... Uh, well, and, and we did it because... The Carlin building got done right over across the street here. Yeah. Right? You know, that building sat at risk of being vacant for years. And Mike and Mike and uh, Daryl bought that building, and we noticed that, and we decided, you know, that there's got to be something going on down there. And mm -hmm. there's a bunch of people, you included, yeah, that have decided that downtown is where, you know, that's the ditch we're going to die in. Yeah, that's right. It was great. I know with us being right across the street from the Carlin building and seeing the cinder blocks come out of the windows and actual glass going back in there and knowing that the last time those you know floors had seen light was before the 66 tornado. I mean, so you think about that and, and what kind of uh, uh, time it is for people to be investing in the community. Yeah. There's a lot of that happening. There is. There's a right ton now. of inertia going on right now. And it's just going to make it easier for recruiting, you know, employees, for people like Hills and Payless and, sure. and the state. And uh, so, 
uh, I think that uh, the uh, all indications are that it's all going to go well. It's kind of an organism, you know. There's, yeah. There's restaurants. There's retail. There's housing. There's a lot of other things that have to all happen all kind of at the same time. And yeah. And you can't get one going without the other. And, yeah. And uh, you know the Jayhawk. Uh, it's going to be 900 seats, and it's going to bring a lot of people in for art films and take all that money that we've been sending over to Lawrence and Kansas City yep. and actually bringing people from those towns yep. for some really quality entertainment. Absolutely. And how long has it been sitting vacant? You know, uh, well, I'm not good at math, but... Uh, a long time. 30-some like years. And <laughs> yeah. A long time. And uh, it, it's really a simple matter of uh, we have to get a, a, the initial big investor to uh, donate some money and so we can really get going, hire an executive director, uh, get the uh, restoration started. And it's a big project. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we have been finding a lot more excitement in the last few months. And so I, I'm hoping that we'll have some great big great announcements here soon. I've seen the, the take a seat campaign and all that. Everything yeah. going well with that? People buying yeah, seats? Yeah, it's, it's, people are buying seats. Good. And uh, the memberships are going up, too. And, you know, you talk to people on the street and they go, well, I'm glad it's finally going. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, a, that's the first indication that it really is going. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have a, a lot of work to do still, uh, but we're excited about it. It'll definitely be worth it when it's all yeah. complete and we can go sit in the Jayhawk and Baskin. I mean, it's even today you go in there and the it's just so beautiful. It's so regal, yeah. uh, and there's no seats and there's nothing in there right now, right. and and it needs a lot of help. Yeah. And, but that's where we can come to the call sure. and actually uh, and actually do something. So we're having a cleanup day on the 21st. Uh, so volunteers that can come down and help on that will be uh, helpful. And uh, uh, you know, we uh, got a grant recently from the city uh, that's going to help us. Uh, with uh, some uh, uh, the the roofing and the and uh, the count and also the state uh, historical society excellent uh, has uh, given us a grant for, to help with roofing and and uh, electrical power and uh, so uh, those are really primary gifts that we got that are uh, great indications that the city of Topeka is behind it and then the state of Kansas is too. The individual residents living around here, what can they do to get involved with this? Is there, uh, you guys have a website to go to? Or? Yeah, there's a website. Uh, I think the best thing people can do is to just spread the word. You know, mm -hmm. talk, tell people that it's a viable project, that it's really gonna happen, that if they wanna see culture and a better, uh, or an, another alternative venue for culture and film and live music and blues and jazz and rock, uh, somebody uh, came up with the idea of having boxing matches there, <laughs> and uh, I think that would yeah, be fantastic. Absolutely. You know? uh, we've been making a bunch of friends with uh, uh, people like Ann House, who uh, runs the technical side of the Lead Center in oh, wow. uh, Lawrence. So I've toured that, shot photos there, asked them a million questions. They've been over here. Uh, concert uh, uh, staging and, and lighting professionals have been in. Uh, acousticians have come in to analyze kind of uh, you know, what kind of acoustics uh, uh, it'll have. Wow. Um, you know, we've got architectural plans. We've got engineering study done. Uh, a lot of legwork has happened, uh, and so we're really excited about it. Excellent. Well, I want to also just take a minute and, and talk about the fact that you did uh, the work on the Thatcher Building down there. Yeah. Um, what were some of the uh, the hurdles that you guys encountered as you were uh, getting into that? Well, first we had to fool some banks. <laughs> no. Wait, did, I, did I come out of my mouth? Well, well they've been doing it for years. so uh, <laughs> <laughs> Payback. That's right. <laughs> No, uh, we we found a great partnership uh, with Silver Lake Bank, and um, we love those guys. They're they've been awesome, and the SBA was really amazing too. When you go through a process like this, you know, and you want to work with the SBA, there's a few more hurdles you got to jump through, mm -hmm. and uh, but they were uh, just amazingly good at helping us uh, figure out what we needed to do because you know, Greg and I, you know, Greg, yeah, absolutely, we're not near as smart as we look. <laughs> oh, right. now you're you're pretty smart. I don't pull it out there, yeah. <laughs> but we, uh, you know, we we really worked hard at 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 learning just enough to to fill out all the right paperwork. Sure. Now it's also on the National Historic Register, 
And so that means that the National Park Service is keenly interested in what you do to that building. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody has kind of a misunderstanding about that. It, it really added very few uh, uh, impossibilities to mm -hmm. what we wanted to do. Um, you know, we had to have a plan. Uh, we hired uh, Davis Preservation. Sure. And uh, Christy helped us through that. And without her, it wouldn't have been possible. Yeah. You know, our architect is here in Topeka. Our engineer is in the Carlin building across the street here uh, from your studios. Yeah. And, you know, so we kept it all local. All the, the contractors were local. Um, you know, kind of an army of pirates shows up. And, and um, the only... Uh, organization that helped us with restoration was the window guy who was from Missouri mm -hmm. and uh, we put a uh, hundred thousand dollars of windows wow into that building wow yeah. they're probably a little bit more efficient than uh, what there than was the old <laughs> yeah, yeah well, the, the bats and the yeah. birds were flying <laughs> in and everything uh, it, the whole building is ADA compliant mm -hmm. uh, we have basically all new electricity in it wow. we have uh, uh, three or four new air conditioners, um, mm -hmm. you know, a great vegan vegetarian cafe. Uh, we just recently uh, uh, added the, the Prairie Glass uh, studio, art studio, down in the basement. Excellent. Uh, Kim Hughes is a legendary glass fusion artist. Wow. Uh, she makes beautiful glass jewelry and vases and bowls and uh, sconces and uh, y y just amazing, beautiful work. Yeah. Uh, and she transformed that uh, garden level into a, an excellent retail space. And right. it adds a lot. And, you know, when we bought the building, you know, our goal was to have a lot of art and a lot of life and vibrancy in that building. And yeah. so we weren't interested in bringing in like an accountant, yeah. you know, into the place or something. Uh, we wanted um, the right fit. And at first we thought we, we would be able to, you know, easily figure out a way to get a grocery store in there because downtown kind of really needs to have a grocery store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that didn't happen and um, we didn't really worry about it. And then she came to us and said, hey, I, I, need, I need a space and this is perfect. Uh, she'll be conducting uh, glass fusion classes in there for young and Great. old. And uh, she's got kilns in the back uh, right next to my kiln because uh, I'm a potter. Cool. I have a pottery studio. Aside from everything, uh, you have your full plate. Time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the top front floor is available for rent um, and renovation. We haven't finished that, uh, but uh, Very good. someday some turtle will swim up to us and say, "Hey, I want. I've got Let's the perfect go right business to, to rent." Uh, but you know, it, we love the place, and it's uh, you know the Rep the Kansas Republican Party started uh, in that building. Um, wow. It has uh, a really rich history. It was a printing comp. There was a printing company there years ago, and you know yeah. most of the old buildings in town burnt down. That's so true. Or are now parking lots. Well, it's one of those things that I think it's very, uh, very notable that people should know that when someone, when the majority of people are looking at a property and saying that thing just needs to have the wrecking ball thrown at it and, and you've got people like Jeff out there who are willing to step in front of the wrecking ball and actually show us that uh, it is possible to do something not only uh, cool but outstanding and I think well, you, you guys have done, have done a great job and uh, you really really are it's an asset for Topeka now that you guys have, have we, we done. We really underestimated the amount of excitement that that generated you know older people come up to us and and shake our hands vigorously and thank us you know repeatedly for what we did and we didn't realize at the time that it was going to be that important to people but <laughs> exactly. it really put the gizmo brand on the map sure uh, and, and uh, you know uh, it's helped us uh, a lot with our our ability to um, bring in more clients and better clients and excellent uh, so uh, those benefits were were huge very good well, Jeff, I, I, we're running out of time here, yep. uh, but I can't let you go until we do the okay. lightning round. All that right. is the segment where I ask you a bunch of silly questions and you give me some silly answers. So uh, here they are. We'll put 60 seconds on the clock and go. Uh, no. what, oh, yes, true. <laughs> now, what's your favorite thing to do on a Friday night in Topeka? Uh, laundry. Oh, well, that's a good one. First time I heard that I one. I told you I was excited. <laughs> At a movie theater, which armrest is yours? Whichever one's in the corner. Okay. I'll think about that later. I... <laughs> What's your favorite hobby? 
pottery. Ah, yes. Uh, what's the difference between normal ketchup and fancy ketchup? The label. I think you're right. Uh, let's see. In your opinion, what was the greatest movie ever made? Cinema Paradiso or American Beauty. I have to go with American Beauty. Oh, good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, what's your favorite kind of food? Salmon. Grilled. Oh, good. Nice one, nice yeah. one. Uh, what's your favorite tourist attraction in Topeka? I love the zoo. Ah, oh, very good. And what is your favorite television show to watch Tuesday nights at 9.30 on well, my TV? We'll talk about Topeka. Hey, sure. great choice. <laughs> Well, Jeff, thanks so much yeah, for joining us. Really appreciate yeah, it. And, uh, we definitely keep us updated what you guys are doing down there. Will do. Thanks. Thanks for tuning into this episode of TalkAboutTopeka.com. I'm Chris Schultz. If you liked what you saw today, please help our guests spread their message by sharing our videos with your friends. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This episode of Talk About Topeka was brought to you by the WIBW channels and Field of Greens, a garden bistro in downtown Topeka. Topeka's number one salad bar, according to me. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Remember, keep talking about Topeka.